maybe one so I was just going to make a part two to this video because I really just want to make sure that everybody understands um, that the hand pieces uh, that they've created for this model don't necessarily improve the efficacy um, over previous uh, hand pieces that have been used by other companies in the industry or what's also known as the probe hand pieces which is where the laser shines through a lens okay and you push that into the tissues of the body so I'm going to play this video so you can hear their explanation it just takes 20 seconds and then I'm going to respond uh, to what he has stated uh, being the quote advantages of the kind of newly designed cutting edge hand pieces okay so if you could just listen here and then i'll respond it's just 20 seconds i'm just playing a short part of the clip here the thing that's great about the 40 watt unit is that it's going to allow you to treat very large areas very quickly so when you're if you're a novice to photobiomodulation you're not quite sure how it works basically in a nutshell you have to put enough energy into the tissue to create a response and we're experts at, at that and we've developed this to help make that very easy one of the things we've done is we've created an extra large cone which allows you to basically have a spot size that's twice the size of our uh, previous large coat. So if you can think about it, if you were trying to paint a wall, would you rather use a large brush or a small brush? Basically, this extra large cone is, a, is the largest brush that you can use uh, to allow you to treat backs, hips, things that have a lot of... Okay, so um, this, this, this marketing angle, um, the first company that used this concept, which is not accurate, um, what he's the, the claim that's being made is not actually um, backed up um, by they haven't actually proven this uh, the same claim was started or this concept which I, I consider more of a sales marketing tactic by Thor laser t-h-o-r Thor laser uh, s developed um, some a uh, couple different probe heads that had many different uh, diodes in it multiple diodes that would be larger and then they had some that were smaller so when they created the one with more diodes that was larger uh, what that what that did was if let's say it was um, a five watt laser if they had more diodes and the head was larger then you would distribute the five watts over the multiple diodes so it, it doesn't actually help you treat faster you still have five watts so whether the five watts is in a single beam a single diode or multiple diodes okay uh, and they're giving you more coverage with the multiple diodes it's just splitting up the beam so it doesn't actually give you any greater depth of penetration um, it's actually better to put it through a single diode something smaller now in this case they're using a single diode okay so they're not using multiple diodes but I just wanted to point out that Thor laser was the first to kind of create this marketing pitch so to say that you can theoretically cover more surface area um, so one thing that does directly determine depth of penetration and how fast okay so the greater surface area that you can cover is the strength of a laser okay so this is 40 watts so thereby a 60 watt uh, delivers more um, time it delivers more dosage over time okay so that's to do with your power density and your dosing protocols if you can deliver more power in a shorter space of time um, that means that you would move the laser okay like you'd move a 60 watt and you would paint over the body in an area at a faster rate than a 40 watt okay so now what they're saying is they're taking the 40 watt and they're they're putting it through a larger lens okay larger but what happens is let's if you can let me zoom in on the photo here for you here okay so if the lasers um, coming out from the, the you know coming into the lens right there okay at the base um, and there's a distance between let's say the tissue and your bodies you know it's touching right there it's touching the body imagine that um, there's a distance that's traveled where then the beam is widening okay to a larger diameter this doesn't save you time um, all that you've done is you've reduced the actual power density you've reduced the, uh, the the irradiation and you've expanded it okay diffused it to a larger a larger coverage okay but that actually reduces the intensity um, right here 
5K right at the edge of the lens on the body. And so there's a, there's a distance here, okay? So as you, you're widening that 40 watts, um, that's actually reducing, okay, the amount of actual power that's touching each of these, let's say, centimeters squared, um, okay, all those different little areas across the whole surface area to diameter, okay? It's the, the, there's less intensity at that level versus something that's a smaller diameter where it's more concentrated, okay? And you also want the lens, you want, the, you want it to be right on top of where it's coming out of the fiber optic as close as possible. Um, but more importantly, you want that lens to be smaller, okay? So smaller, more intense, you then push it into the body and then you move it, okay? So in this, by going wider and diffusing the beam, it doesn't actually help you speed things up, okay? Uh, so if it was smaller and more concentrated, then you would be doing what you are normally supposed to do anyways when you're administering laser therapy, which is moving or painting um, that probe head uh, across, let's say, the hip so you're, or the shoulder. You're moving it around the shoulder, and you keep moving the laser, the class 4 laser, around those tissues. So if, uh, if a higher amount of energy is coming through, and it's through a smaller diameter, a smaller probe head, you're moving that laser at a certain speed or rate, okay? And if it's going through a higher intensity and smaller diameter, or it's a higher power level, say 60 watts, you're moving it at a fast pace, okay? And you're covering more surface area, and you're getting a greater depth of penetration. But if you're diffusing the beam, okay, and you've had a lower total power output, you get the idea. So there, you're not actually improving upon things. Okay. Another analogy is they, they talk about like a spray can or a painting. It's true that you could cover more surface area um, if, you know, it was, uh, it, 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 let me back up a second. Um, there's, there's something that they're not acknowledging, which is the, um, in the spray can analogy is what is the rate or the amount of paint that is coming through the sprayer, okay? So if you had a smaller output nozzle, let's just say, okay, versus a larger, if the smaller output nozzle had a higher flow rate, you'd be moving and spraying at a faster pace, okay? And that might, say, equate to the wider nozzle at a lower flow rate. I don't know if that makes any sense. So all I'm gonna say is that concept that they're teaching here this is not backed up by any science at all. That it does not allow you to go any faster. In other words, um, they haven't improved anything here from like a traditional handpiece. 